welcome everybody here. We have a nice crowd tonight. Uh, first of all, I want to wish everybody a Happy New Year on behalf of Council. And uh, tonight, I, I'm hoping that everybody keeps in their thoughts and their prayers on the uh, loss of the Ir Iranian downing of that plane. What a senseless, senseless tragedy. So keep, keep them in our hearts and our minds. Thank you. So I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, is there any conflict of interest tonight amongst council members? Hmm? Just have closed meeting report. Yeah. Seeing none, uh, I'm going to have a report on closed meeting. Uh, Rob? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is just a report out in public that council by motion went into closed session earlier this evening. Uh, council uh, dis had discussion concerning personal matters, uh, concerning identifiable individuals, and council also gave direction uh, concerning a potential land purchase. Uh, this is all as permitted in closed session under section 239 of the Municipal Act. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Rob. Uh, is there any conflict of interest amongst council members? Seeing none, uh, I need a motion for the uh, published agenda, adoption of the published agenda. Yeah, just, uh, you need an addition. Uh, Go ahead. Through you, Mr. Mayor, just a couple of items. Um, the first item, uh, if it's council's wish, I was going to suggest if we could move uh, presentation 6.2 to 6.1. Uh, so that's our, uh, that's our children from Anderton Public School uh, as the first presentation. And then secondly, uh, we received a, a late delegation request uh, as it pertains to planning report 2020-01. Uh, if it's council's wish, uh, we could add that as 6.2.2 uh, to our under delegations this evening. Thank you and the pleasure of the council. Is that okay with council? All in favor of that? Okay, it's carried. Go ahead. To council. Uh, my apologies, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councilor Verbeek uh, wanted to give notice of a couple of notices motion as well as part of the published agenda. Okay, thank you. She'll, she'll present them when it comes. Yeah. So can we just pass the motion as yeah. amended with Councillor? Uh, yeah. I need a motion. Need a motion, please. Yep. Yep. Just yep. as amended. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 5.1. Adoption of minutes that the minutes of the regular council meeting held December 16th be adopted as circulated. Have a mover, please. Councillor Bowman and seconder Deputy Mayor Malash. Any questions on this one? All in favor? It's Gary. And 5.2, that the minutes of the special council meeting of November 4th, 2019 be adopted as circulated. Mover, please. Councillor Bowman and Councillor Bjorkman. Any questions on this one? All in favor? It's Gary. Mr. Mayor, our first uh, presentation or delegation this evening has moved to 6.1 on the agenda from 6.2. Uh, we have grade 8 students from Anderton Public School, the ECHL team at Anderton Public School. Uh, they're here this evening to ask council to give consideration to a townwide ban on single-use plastics. Uh, Addison Walker, uh, Dara Aston, and their teacher, Mrs. Nolan, are here this evening. Thank you, Rob. <clears throat> Welcome, ladies. Uh, anytime you're ready, you can start. Across the world, plastic bags and straws strangle the earth. Because of this, we must ban plastic straws and bags. Banning plastic straws and bags would be very cost efficient, as reusable items save people businesses and money. Each year, over 100,000 sea animals are killed, and many more are injured from plastic debris in the ocean. Many large companies have already decided to go straw-free, such as Starbucks and American Airlines. Not using plastic straws and bags would also help to save the environment. 
We must eliminate the use of plastic straws and plastic bags to stop the unnecessary harm to sea animals as well as it's good from a cost efficiency perspective. Using plastic straws and plastic bags is not cost effective. A plastic bag costs between 5 and 50 cents and only lasts one use. For instance, if a shopper purchased five plastic bags a week, it would cost them between $13 and $130 per year. Five reusable bags only cost around $15 and they last for a very long time. 5,000 unwrapped plastic straws cost around $15. A busy restaurant probably goes through at least 5,000 straws in a week. Lastly, eight metal straws cost $16 and they last for a very long time. This proves that reusable items save people and businesses money. Here are some, here are some alternatives to plastics. Animals die due to plastic. Each year, over 100,000 sea animals die because of plastic debris in the ocean and many more are injured. Approximately 1 million sea birds die because of plastic. This should not be happening. On June 4th, 2018, a male pilot whale was found unable to breathe or swim in a Thai canal. A necropsy revealed that he had over 80 plastic bags and even more other debris in his stomach. Plastic products are also a hazard for turtles. Because of their bone structure, turtles can die from eating only 14 fingernail-sized pieces of plastic. Not using plastic straws and bags can help to protect animals from eating plastic. Many companies and cities have already banned plastic bags and plastic straws, so we must do the same. Starbucks, a $10 billion company, has said that they will not have plastic straws or bags at any of their locations by 2020. American Airlines also said that they will eliminate all plastic straws and plastic stir sticks from each of their locations, including all flights and lounges. The state of California has banned plastic straws from all restaurants. California has also banned single-use plastics at all stores. Starbucks, American Airlines, and California have banned some plastic products, and we can do the same. Here are some examples of places that have banned plastic. Dartmouth University, the University of Guelph, Western University, the Libro Center, Bali, Indonesia, Kenya, and 27 other countries according to the UN. Plastic contains harmful chemicals. By eliminating the use of plastic straws and plastic bags, we can help to save people. Plastic is made from benzene and vinyl hydrochloride. These chemicals contaminate our air and soil and are known to cause cancer. Phthalates are another chemical added to plastic. It affects fertility and can prevent our endocrine glands from working properly, causing birth defects and other health issues. The problem with these chemicals is that when plastic is made, they are released into the air. Some plastic also has the chemical BPA, which is known to cause hair loss and heart-related health issues. Reducing the use of plastic would do so much good for the environment and for the people of our Earth. Plastic straws and bags cause nothing but harm. First, each year many animals are harmed or even die because of plastic. These deaths are unnecessary. Second, people can die because of plastic. And third, if we don't stop using plastic, the earth will die. We must ban single-use plastics and straws for all of these reasons. We must ban plastic bags and straws for the sake of people, the environment, and animals who experience the consequences of plastic without ever using any themselves. Single-use plastics t make up over 50% of all plastics, and they are used for seconds but stay on the earth forever. Even though the federal government is doing something, it is long overdue. We must make a move not in three years, one year, or even a month, but now. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, ladies, for the presentation. It was excellent. I'm going to open up the floor uh, to council. Any questions? Councillor Verbeek.
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I just want to thank Miss um, Walker and Miss Miss Ashton for your activism. You you presented very well. You're 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 gifted at at that. And thank you for bringing this important message out and educating uh, people about it. My question to you is, um, can we get a copy of your slideshow? Sure, we've already we've already sent it to someone here, but we can send it to anyone else who'd like it as well. It's out there. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else on council? Uh, Councillor Bjorkman. Yes, thank you very much, ladies. That was a very informative. I liked how you, you kept it moving. It was interesting with your slides. Uh, I do have a, a question. Um, we're, uh, we're looking at uh, getting rid of straws in, in our uh, establishment, but we're having a problem finding the replacement straw. Uh, when you're trying to, it's one thing if you're just having pop or water, but if you're serving milkshakes and you get one of those straws and you try to make it last all the way to the bottom of that milkshake, that can be some trouble. So if you've come across some things and you've got some ideas for us, uh, that would be fantastic because, you know, it's something that we're looking at now. We want to do that. Uh, it's a matter of, again, if people expect a certain level of service to come with what they're buying, and as long as we can replace that with something that's natural, biodegradable, um, we're looking forward to doing that. So it's good work that you're doing, and anything you can share with us, it would be terrific. Well, you could you could use um, cardboard straws. Those are really good. Or you could maybe sell metal straws. Those can be bought online. And maybe if you had a business, maybe you could sell metal straws with the milkshake. Maybe that'd be good for business. <laughs> Another example of a biodegradable straw, I've never used one personally, but I've heard about hay straws, which are, they look like wood straws or bim... Some, they look like wood straws, but they're um, biodegradable. Anybody else from council? Councillor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to our delegation, thank you for coming forward. We have quite a few things on our agenda tonight that are related to the environment, and one is from the city of Woodstock. Their council has passed a motion banning the use of plastic bags. So that's, uh, that's pretty fitting. Also, I hate to admit that this because I would never go again. But I did go to the Detroit Zoo with my kids when they were younger. The Detroit Zoo does not sell straws. They actually sell like um, ones with little animals on them. Like you don't get a straw with your drink there. You have to buy like a twirly. And I ended up buying quite a few of those straws because I was out of, like I kept, like, I don't know if you, I was even throwing them out, which is even worse. But there are places where you can go where you can buy a fancy straw and then you take it home and you have it for a long time. Also, I hopped on a jet, which isn't environmentally friendly either, went to, I know, went to Cuba, Cuba, and the last resort I went to in Cuba didn't have straws anywhere, right? And, and I wasn't just drinking pop or water, I was drinking uh, booze and out of a, out of, and I, I didn't even think anything of it. Actually, after like three days of being there, I was like, I said to Rick, I'm like, there's no straws here. And it was just, it was normal there. And that's the problem, right? Right now we get a drink and we're like, like, where's the straw? Because it's not normal, right? So um, at home we have some, some really good um, metal straws, although you want to like make sure you never like hit your teeth or the kids are asleep because they are a little dangerous because you're not used to them. You know, we try, I was thinking, when all this power was going out and I had to replace my sump pump, my water in my house was off and I said to Rick, I'm like, I don't even have bottles of water. Like, we use reusable water, right? So, um, it's just getting in new habits. So, I don't know if there's a way we can adopt your presentation. Uh, maybe you can share with us um, what other towns you've gone to and what they've done, whether they've adopted it in principle and, and looked at ways we can always do better, right? We're, I don't think we're ever going to get to that plastic-free, uh, you know, party that we all want to be at. I want to be at that with you too, but it's just Right now, we have so far to go, but I think we can take steps. I know the Hero Arena, they have slushies, I get them, and they have biodegradable straws, so I, don't, I feel a little less guilty, right? So I do think there are things we can do, and I'm hoping this council does decide to do something tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, anybody else? Councillor uh, Benendol. Uh, Mr. Chair, are we being asked tonight to, to support the ban? Just, uh, I don't think they're here to, to ask. I, I think uh, that's what it says. So, 
Are you here to, for to support it or pass a motion? Pardon yes. Me? Okay. It's going to be up to council. Well, I mean, through the chair, it, it was a wonderful presentation, and it's uh, it's great to see kids wanting to improve the planet. Something that uh, I've always wanted to do since I was your age. Um, Part of the thing about democracy is that people get to disagree. <laughs> and uh, there are some aspects to this ban that might not be beneficial. And as I was thinking about this this afternoon, like, I, I don't use plastic straws myself. I, I don't drink pop. And, uh, and I've been a recycler since I was your age, which is about a million years ago. But if we make this a ban and we force people to, uh, to agree with us, we'll end up inadvertently hurting some other people. And this afternoon, I was thinking about a good friend of mine who lives in my ward, who has a real severe case of Parkinson's. He has to have straws. And when he heard about this ban coming, he went out and bought boxes of them because he cannot even bring a glass of water to his mouth. There are a lot of people in nursing homes. We're an aging society. We, some of us need straws. Even if I don't use them and you don't use them, I, don't, I think it would be wrong to take it away from the few who do need to use them. And also, um, you know, you can, you can remove the straws, but what about the lid? The lid is even heavier plastic. There's more plastic in the lid, so that doesn't really solve it. And finally, I'm kind of a tree hugger, and I don't think it's a solution to cut down trees to make paper straws. I think using fewer plastic straws would be a, a more sensible idea. Um, I'm all for a, a voluntary reduction in use of plastic, a voluntary reduction in use of straws, but, but not, not a coerced, like a forced... Uh, reduction uh, because it'll hurt other people. So, thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Anybody else? Uh, Councillor Bjorkman. Oh. Oh. Let it go ahead. Um, and I just wanted to address your comment because I felt the same way and we, the girls and I, we did talk about this. There are other options. Green Heart Company who delivers our lunches Monday and Wednesday to Anderton and use, they, it looks just like a plastic straw. It works just like a plastic straw. It's thin. You can use it in milkshakes or any thick drink. It won't disintegrate, but it's made from some type of sugar and you put it under the hot water in the tap and it's gone within 10 minutes. Completely biodegradable. So there are options for our um, population that requires plastic-like items. So we can connect you with Dennis from Green Heart and he would for sure hook you up with the company that supplies them. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bjorkman, I think you were next. Yeah, I think we're not, uh, they're not asking us to outright, well, they'd probably be thrilled if we outright banned everything tonight, but we're, um, what they've done with the other towns that they've visited already too is that the councils have agreed to look into, have administration have a look, what does that look like to us? What does banning uh, single-use plastic items look like? Is there a, a way to move forward to that? Uh, I think things, plastic bags are the easy one. Um, like I said, now we got straws with sugar on them. I like it even more. So we can find a way to make that work. Um, but, but that's what we're looking for. Are we prepared as a town to start looking at the process and walking down that road? And I think that's something um, I will actually make the motion to receive their presentation and direct administration to look at bannings, single-use uh, plastic bags, and uh, straws and single-use items that we can have some control over in the town. Uh, I think it's important for us to start those uh, conversations. So, it's supported by Deputy Mayor Malash. All in favor? It's carried. Just, just to um, to add uh, to this, I was watching a program over the weekend, and North Northwood Law. And they showed, they showed a turtle. I couldn't believe it. They showed this turtle that was full of debris. It was plastics. I, I think there was a matter of fact, there was a plastic fishing lure in there. Um, so it does happen. I, you know, I, I watched that program over the weekend. It was quite interesting to see that. So anyways, um, yeah, one more question. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
Back to the other comment you said earlier, um, Amherstburg, they, they looked into having a town-wide ban. They work, they're working on a feasibility study to do so. But it's all about being role models for your community. So they banned um, plastic straws at the Libro Center, which is our big arena there, as well as at any of their events and their facilities that they can control. Thank you. I, I think our administration will come back with a report. And I think uh, also our um, climate panel too, they might be able to do something here because that's got a lot to do with the climate too. So thank you very, very much ladies for your presentation. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, 6.2 on the agenda tonight, we have the first of uh, two delegations. Both of these delegations this evening uh, uh, concern or in conjunction with planning report 202001, and that is the signed bylaw amendment application for 108 County Road 50 East. Our first delegate this evening is Mr. Bernard Gorski. I was just getting familiar with the electronics here. Okay. Um, I'm here to ask for a site-specific amendment to this road si uh, sign bylaw. My name is Bernard Gorski and my wife is Nancy Gorski and we are proud owners of Colchester Ridge Estate Winery. Our family has been farming in the area since 1926 and we're here to stay for a little while longer and we'd like to improve things as we go along. My wife and I made a very large investment in our winery to, to offer the public a place to hold events and to offer an inviting atmosphere to our customers to experience winery life. I understand the town's planning department wants to increase tourism along County Road 50. And we have a winery business in Colchester that will help the town reach its goals. We've replaced our old sign with a new sign and to let the customers know that we're open for business and to let them know what we have to offer. The sign is the same size as the old sign, but the pedestal on the ground is about two feet taller, so that makes the whole thing two feet taller. I had the sign for 16 years and I had no problem with it. And the new sign has, it now has a digital media component to it. The sign permit application that we neglected to fulfill was strictly an oversight on our behalf and for which we apologize. Our old sign was a letterboard sign and it looked unprofessional. Our messages to the public will be clear and easy to read with the new sign. The statistics show that people rely less on maps because of the use of electronic maps on their cell phones and nav systems in their car. Now tourists rely on road signs for information and we have a professional business and we need a professional sign with the scrolling message across it with permanent, with uh, pertinent information. We're sure that you will agree that many of the existing stationary signs in the area look haphazard and unprofessional. There is a sign here, which is, I don't know, I had to double click on this. Okay, wait. I don't know, that uh, doesn't work. That one. Okay. Now, this is a picture of a sign that is blown over and just to show an unprofessional look, uh, the way it looks. Okay, now, we only want to operate our sign during business hours. We don't want to have it operating at nighttime. We can respect that the neighbors don't want flashing signs disrupting their nights, and we don't have any intention of disrupting our neighbors. We would like to display things like, come in, we're open from 9 till 6 p.m. And 
you know, I've just bottled a new wine and I wanted to tell everybody and it would say something like, we've just bottled our 2017 Grand Cru, please come in for a tasting. And we can't do that with a letterboard sign. We'll be more than happy, and in, in addition to this, we are more than happy to promote community-based events on our sign as a courtesy to the town of Essex for their indulgence in granting a site-specific amendment. I believe that we can use the technology available for us uh, or to us in order to reach our goals in enhancing tourism, attracting people and creating jobs in the area. I'm sure that the town of Essex wants to be successful in growth and population as well as tourism and general business. Crew Winery also wants to be successful and professional and create at least 16 new jobs in the area and our sign is going to help promote the business to support these jobs. I've read the report to council and it concludes that your recommendation is to deny my application. I don't agree with your recommendation. Our business is in an agricultural area, yet we're taxed as commercial. So I think we need a commercial sign to support and promote our commercial business. The bylaws uh, that you, uh, the, the bylaw states that the sign shouldn't be over two meters in height. Now I've got, well, let's see, how do you scroll this? There, I've got signs like this one here for the Holy Family Retreat House is three meters in height. The three examples that the council gave, Erie Shores Vineyard, Oxley Estate Winery, and Cooper's Hawk Winery, all these signs are well over two meters in height, touching very close to three. Oxley even has a second sign that's 5.7 meters in height. This one right here, that's 5.7 meters off the ground. Even the Colchester Center sign, this one here is 2.7 meters high. So I don't think that the height is that important. Now we're going to talk about even taller signs. There's Rick's Performance in Colchester, the Country Depot, Garfield's, uh, the Feed Store, Renault RV, Renault Ford, Canflow on Erie Road, and the OPP sign. All these signs are well over 5.5 meters in height. Mine's only 4.4. And when you look at it in perspective with the big building in the back, it doesn't look out of place. It actually looks rather good and will be uh, excellent in the neighborhood. There are many examples of digital media signs in agricultural areas that are currently operating, and they are very good. Wolfhead Distillery is one of them. Uh, Amherstburg has another sign, uh, well, that's in Amherstburg. Inside Out in Kingsville has a very large digital media sign in the town of Harrow, the Colio, the Country Depot, the OPP, and there's many more places in McGregor, the Community Center and all this other stuff. And I want the same concept. I just want things scrolling across it, telling people about the, you know, the venue that we have and, and what we've got to offer. I can appreciate that Harrow wants to keep the small town rustic image, but that doesn't mean we have to remain a small population. In 1968, Kingsville was only 3,000 people with a lot of historic buildings. It still is a, has a lot of historic buildings and now has a population of 24,000 people. In 1968, Amherstburg had 12,000 people. It's a small town with the historic uh, type setting and now it's got 22,000 people. They all have uh, the use of proper signage to support business, create new jobs and uh, keep the economy going. It attracts people to the area. With proper planning, Harrow can grow as well and keep the small town image with the proper amendments to its bylaws. And we can encourage population, economic growth and uh, continue to cre uh, create jobs. And if we don't have, uh, if we don't advance with the times and act progressively, people will move elsewhere into other communities and we won't have something that develops. It would be beneficial for the town of Essex to increase the population by promoting business and creating jobs in the area. And I think the sign will help. 
I am here to ask the council and the mayor to consider my request to grant me a site-specific bylaw amendment so I can use my digital media sign with the restrictions that I've stated and operating only during business, biz, uh, during business hours and to attract the tourists and to keep my business moving. And just one thing, we can always say that a business with no sign is a sign of no business. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Bernard, for the presentation. Uh, questions from Council. Councillor Garen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm wondering if we can just have uh, administration respond to some of Mr. Gorski's claims on heights of some of those signs that you're showing in the pictures. Some look like they're on commercial properties, um, but I think we need to hear from administration to see where they stand on this. Um, Chris, uh, Chris will speak on this. Sure. Uh, to your worship. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to go through, I guess, all the signs. I'll speak more to the report and, and Mr. Gorski's presentation. Um, and I don't want to necessarily get into all the detail of the report. There's, uh, it's well written. There's a lot of detail there. It gives you a lot of background. It goes through the bylaws. It goes through the interpretation. Uh, at the end of the day, and, and Mr. Gorski uh, didn't shy away from, I guess, the three factors uh, with respect to this sign. Um, one, it was in his site plan control agreement to get uh, a sign permit for um, as part of his new works and, and, and he had noted that was uh, just inadvertently missed on that end. Uh, so that's one. Two, it's in violation of the height. And three, it's in violation of having um, an electronic media sign attached to it. So those are the three factors that you're considering tonight. Your sign bylaw was passed in 2015 under uh, around uh, uh, an immense amount of debate uh, consultation. Uh, I remember it well in terms of uh, what you wanted for the town of Essex and, and that at the end of the day is what you need to consider. What do you want for the town of Essex? All areas, you know, whether it's County Road 50 or your urban areas. Uh, the distinction in this area is it is in an agricultural dis district. Um, the allowable height is two meters, as Mr. Gorski noted. Um, and the purpose of conveying a message electronically is not permitted in an agricultural district. This is something that, that council had discussed uh, back when the bylaw was written. It's not something that, that council of the day wanted for their rural roads. Not to say that can't change. Again, this is your bylaw and yours to do with. We're just providing the report based on the bylaw we have uh, at, at the time. So the facts are in there. Uh, again, I mean, you know, failed to apply for a permit, and some of this might have been hashed out in, in that period as opposed to getting constructed and now uh, asking for forgiveness as opposed to permission, right? Uh, and then in, in reference to the height and the media. Uh, with respect to some of the heights on the other side, uh, on the other signs that Mr. Gorski um, had shown pictures of, I believe, and, and I may be mistaken, a lot of those signs were in place prior to this bylaw, I believe. Uh, I can't be sure on all of them, but I know um, many of them are older than 2015. So uh, I think that's at least a summary of where we're at tonight uh, and, and what you have before you. Um, if you have any additional or detailed questions, I've got uh, Ms. Chadwick here as well, the Director of Development Services, who, if there's something specific, she may be able to give you some further details on, on those. Anybody else from Council? Councillor Van Endel. I don't have uh, questions. I do have some comments. Uh, is, is, do, do these wait till later or now? We have another presentation. Okay, well, I'll wait. Okay. Um, thank you, uh, Bernard, for the presentation. We're going to listen to Bill now and uh, go from there. Okay? So through you, Mr. Chair, uh, as our second delegation added a 6.2.1 to the agenda, we have Mr. Bill Baker here this evening. Uh, he's representing the Harrell and Colchester South Chamber of Commerce. And it's also in conjunction with our planning report that's currently before council. Thank you, uh, Rob. Uh, anytime you're ready, Bill. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Worship, uh, members of council and administration. Uh, my name is Bill Baker, and I'm the vice president of the uh, Harrow Colchester South Chamber of Commerce. I'm here tonight to bring uh, um, the position of the uh, Chamber of Commerce 
uh, with regards to uh, this uh, planning 202001, um, the site bylaw, that's uh, the uh, um, bylaw amendment that's being being requested. Let me first of all begin by just reading the letter, and I think you have a, a, um, a letter in front of you with from uh, the president of the Chamber of Commerce, and after I have just some few general comments. Um, <clears throat> The letter is stated in, a, in a dated January 17th, um, and it says, uh, Your Worship and members of council, uh, regarding the planning uh, we we're just speaking about, the Harrow and Colchester South Chamber of Commerce wishes to support our business community with future innovation and modern signage technology in our growing sectors. We do believe that there should be controlled levels of illumination and daylight regulation criteria in place. We recommend that the council review this bylaw and its parameters within. Now, if I can make a few comments, and this was signed by uh, our president, Tammy Affleck. Um, we have certainly had, we've had calls on both sides from our, our uh, business, business members and the community itself on both sides for and against uh, this current sign. However, I just want to point a few things within the report and that uh, is suggesting and does speak to the bylaw 1350 uh, about managing responsible and viable growth while preserving unique character. I think this is the whole principle about anything in terms of, of opportunity and growth in your community. We have to look at both sides and take everything into consideration. What I do want to point out is, is it's pointed out in your report in front of you uh, about regarding the corporate strategic plan which does not establish special regulations for signage on County Road 50 that considers unique mix of land use regarding agriculture, commercial, and residential. And that is what we have growing in this particular sector. So I think we, in terms of looking at this review, if I could speak to the fact that initially when you look through, and I read through the, the uh, signage bylaw and this report that's been presented, um, there has to be some things that have to be reviewed with regards to the science and how they've come up with some of these initiatives relative to the sign and selecting the signs and position. One thing I will mention, it does suggest in your bylaw that um, with regards to signage in a uh, dense area that they're allowing 50% coverage to have uh, lettering and or, and or graphics. Whereby in a rural area, they're allowing it to go to 70%. Um, so I'm not sure where that principle came from and where the science was behind that to determine whether or not that's the right size. The other point too is it does suggest and it does say that in the in your report in front of you uh, that the uh, urban areas uh, would have more dense signs and, and it was more appropriate to have digital signs etc because there's more competition and they're closer they're, they're closer located. On the other hand, it's suggesting that that's not required in, in, the, in the larger rural area because of the distance. On the contrary, I'm not sure where that science came from. When you're a, a further distance away, you would need to catch the attention of a, of a passing by driver on a greater distance than you would suggesting there. So, I mean, there's a few points within the current bylaw in the review, if there should be a review, that needs to look at the science and how we came up with this stuff. Again. It does state that your corporate strategic plan does not take into consideration the mixed use of agricultural, commercial, and or residential. I think that's the principle that has to be looked at at this point in terms of the review. So again, the uh, Chamber of Commerce is recommending that the council review this bylaw and the parameters within it. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Bill. Um, now we can open it up for uh, discussion. So is there any questions to uh, Bernard or Bill here tonight from Council? So any comments or uh, go ahead, Councillor Van Anno. Uh, thanks, Mr. Baker and Mr. Gorski for the presentation. Uh, what has been pointed out is this sign is perfectly legal in the rest of Essex County. Um, and I, obviously I wasn't here for the, uh, the creation of the original bylaw, but it, it seems to me just driving around and looking at our existing sign stock that our by, this bylaw appears to be uh, overly restrictive. Um, you know, our, we have to have businesses and our businesses have to be able to advertise. 
And the traditional, me I've said this before in this chamber, that the traditional means of, of advertising and reaching customers is disappearing because the mainstream media is basically going away. And uh, that's why all those little billboards are popping up all over Essex County, because businesses have to use them to survive. And as, uh, as Bill Baker was just reminding us, the town itself has a stake in the success of the, the wineries, and um, it isn't in our best interest to hobble them for no good reason. And uh, I think if we look at the other signs in our community, uh, preventing the sign, especially its height, would, would be no good reason. If you drive by the sign, it is not at all large or imposing. I mean, if it wasn't that height, you wouldn't be able to see over your average Essex County pickup truck. You wouldn't be able to see the sign. Um, it's, it's not that tall. And as, uh, as uh, Bernie Gorski pointed out, there are many, many signs already much taller, and they're not considered offensive. It's not as though we're trying to have those removed because they're, they're, they're harming uh, the, the fabric of the town. Nobody would drive by this town and feel one whit less of an enjoyment of, of their drive for seeing that sign. It's far enough back. It's not that tall. The height, at least, I think we have to give them. <clears throat> the, the electric part, um, that may be, maybe we should consider them uh, separately. But, uh, but I, I see nothing wrong with, with, uh, with the height. I think it's perfectly reasonable. And um, I think that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else? Councillor Bjorkman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bernie, for your for coming and making those presentations to help us understand a little bit of where we are. Uh, I think the way we need to look at this and address this is this is the first meeting we're having where we're being approached to have a illuminating sign and a sign that's different than what we've approved for County Road 50. County Road 50 has been thought of in a special way. Uh, it's an area that we want people to be comfortable in. It's rural, it's agricultural, it's very low-key. Um, and the sign bylaw was passed with all of that in mind. Everybody that's on the road right now uses the same sign um, layout. Um, they're on-ground signs, they've got lights on them. That's the bylaw, that's, that's what we need. So now we're being asked to consider changing that bylaw. And to do that, um, we need to do a full review of signs for that area. Um, because there happens to be one there right now that's outside of that does not affect how we go about doing our business. I'm not in favor of a site-specific uh, sign by law, uh, but I am not against reviewing uh, what we have out there and how we should go about it. But we need to have input from the community, from the businesses, from the residences, from the other agricultural places. Um, it's not, uh, we're not out of step with what's normal here. Um, the entire Niagara region has the same sign bylaw that we have here. Um, just to be sure, I went and I did my Google Maps and I drove down all the side roads and I went to Jackson Triggs and I went to all the other places and there's on, on ground signs with lights on them. Uh, a couple of my friends were going up there a couple weeks ago so I had them do a tour just, just to compare. I just want to make sure that you know, maybe there is something that's changed in different areas in our area, uh, so we're not um, out of the uh, out of step uh, with what's happening in other areas around us. Um, but as I say, we need to look at this now as we've been approached. It didn't happen after, in time for the site plan. It didn't happen in time before the sign went up. So that's where we are today. As far as I'm concerned, we're looking at something. The sign's not there yet. We need to make a decision, and when we do that, we do a review. And everybody gets to play by the same rules. So that's how I'm approaching this. Uh, I have no problem with doing a review and, uh, and taking all the stakeholders' planning and their thoughts into effect, but I am not in favor of a site-specific to just advance this until we go further. Right now is where we, we, be, we begin the review process. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Deputy Mayor Malosh. Thank you, through you, Your Worship. Uh, very similar um, idea as to what uh, Councillor Bjorkman has uh, suggested. Uh, right now, uh, I, and I can remember going through this uh, research in 2015 and what administration brought back, our public consultations and so on, and uh, what, we, what we were, what was brought back to us back in 2015 was that um, 
the county road 50 specifically and in a lot of our agricultural areas uh, they were looking at trying to keep the the country charm is what a lot of individuals i had remember hearing uh, was their input and they felt that by having larger industrial type signs uh, it would take that country charm uh, away significantly so I'm not opposed to the larger sign. Absolutely, I think it's a beautiful looking sign in my view. Um, but it is not in, uh, it doesn't follow the regulations that we have for the area. So in order for, and, and I agree with Councillor Bjorkman that uh, for me to be able as well to, uh, I'm, I'm not in agreement with site specific change for this evening, but I would be willing to review the sign bylaw and see what uh, interests are there. County Road 50 may be a different animal than the rest of our agricultural zones that we have throughout the community. Um, Councillor Vanderdolen was saying that uh, throughout the county, and we looked at that back in 2015 as well, um, agricultural zones were different than they were for rural areas. And I think if you look in some of the other uh, communities that we have across the county here too, and we didn't just look there, we looked outside of the, of the um, different areas of the province as well that were agricultural and urban as well as uh, similar to what we have here. And uh, those were the same way where rural areas had uh, maybe a more stringent, less flashy kind of sign uh, that was gonna be permitted. Uh, sh maybe shorter signs and uh, I know our administration developed a sign bylaw in accordance with some of the information that we found from other communities uh, uh, along with some public consultation so I'd be willing to open it up again to have public consultation absolutely because like I said maybe County Road 50 would be a different animal uh, we've just recently opened it up to um, CIP improvements and uh, you know by doing so, we're saying, come on, businesses, let's, we, we want to attract to that area. Um, it may be something different than what we're, what we're doing right now. We just haven't had an opportunity or a, a challenge on it at this point, uh, up until this point. But I would say right now, uh, only because it's not in adherence with our bylaws that uh, un unless we can come to some kind of an agreement with the neighbors, and, I, and, I, and it, sounds like, it sounds like there has been something put in place and we thank you for that. Um, the uh, the lighting at night in particular, uh, I can understand would be uh, an interruption to residents' um, way of life. And, uh, but through the day, I, I'm not as, as opposed. Um, but again, uh, it's not within our zoning bylaw right now for, for our signed bylaw for that area. I would say that we have to bring um, bring the sign, what, the operation of the sign in accordance with the bylaw right now. And then let's have our public hearing. Let's see where it goes from there. And then determine uh, from that, from that uh, consultation in our new bylaw um, what will happen with the sign. So I'm not saying that we should, uh, I, I honestly believe that the sign heights are not an issue, but uh, the messaging perhaps and the, and the the sign being lit up probably would be uh, something that we have to address. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Anybody else? No? Okay, I think at this point here, I, I, I think the recommendation is uh, we're going to have to come back and look at our bylaw and uh, through a public public hearing, public input, and see what the public, uh, what their input is on, on this issue. I, I look at the sign myself. Uh, I really haven't got an issue with the sign. Um, I really haven't got an issue with the height, to be honest with you. Uh, the, the lit part of the sign, uh, th there's where an issue is, but I think you're, you're addressing that problem through the neighbors. I don't know if you have discussions with the neighbors or not. Bernard, have you, have you uh, talked to the neighbors there? Mm -hmm. a day and, and 
Well, I, I hope you can accept uh, our, our view on it right now and what we have to do. We have to have the public in, involved with this. Uh, it's, it's one of those things that it's a bylaw and we're going to change a bylaw now. We've got to look at our signed bylaw. So, and we have to have public input. I, I hope you agree with that because it's... I can't. Seriously, I can't answer that. That would be up to uh, council. I, I, I. Go ahead, councilor. You, Mr. Chair, uh, maybe administration can answer this. Would it be legal for him to buy one of those red neon signs that says open and have it hung there and plugged in? Would that be legal under our bylaw? I suspect it wouldn't be because it's a, it, it's, and that shows how unworkable and unfair this bylaw is. If you can't even have a simple open sign, I mean, you drive by, you, you don't know whether the place is open or not, especially on a Sunday. On, uh, during the week, you'd assume, mm -hmm. but on a Sunday, uh, you, you wouldn't know. Like, uh, this, this is a multi-million dollar investment. You can't leave him hanging there with no way of being able to show that he's open. Thank you, Councillor. Before I get to you, Councillor Garen, um, Laurie, you had a comment? Just to answer that specific question, and through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, to Councillor Vanderdolen, um, any lit sign, any component that is backlit is not per is not permitted in an agricultural district. That just is is the way it's written, and so any lit sign, flashing or backlit is not permitted, uh, and I, I've heard each of you loud and clear tonight. Um, there, there are limitations to this bylaw for agricultural districts, or rather uh, operations, non-residential uses within agricultural districts, and this particular operation is non-residential, and so we need to treat it as such in an agricultural district. Um, I'd like to take you to actually, uh, to Mr. Auger, to page um, where we have the building divisions rendering of the sign not the rendering but rather the dimensions yep you were just there yeah so our building division has gone out and uh, taken some measurements and what we've seen is that the height of the sign is more than double than what is permitted in our sign bylaw so in other words only um, Two meters is permitted. The sign is 4.87 meters, which translates to 16 feet. So it's not solely in violation of, ju of just the media component, but also the height. The bylaw was written, and uh, again, uh, administration has already spoken to, and as well as council has spoken to the public consultation that was uh, had taken place at the time. It's also important to note that not only was there public consultation, but there was insight gained from our experts, our subject matter experts being our policy planner, uh, Mr. Watson, Mr. Jeff Watson, who's not here tonight. Uh, we've also taken into consideration um, the, in keeping with the district, in keeping rather with the, with the neighborhood, with the surrounding land uses, that those restrictions are there in place to protect land use surrounding land uses but also to protect the nature and to keep consistent and rather to keep um, in keeping with the surrounding neighborhood and this particular district as you know is um, as Deputy Mayor Malash or maybe it was uh, <coughs> Councillor Guerin that said charming um, a charming and charming uh, countryside um, it's there. Uh, we we cannot uh, permit the the component media related. We can also take a look at that height and and also say that it is not permitted at this time. Uh, in terms of the site plan agreement, it was quite black and white, uh, and it we did state that any permits, sorry, any plans for a new sign must have had must have had review through administration through our building division, and so uh, it is also in violation of that site plan agreement, which 
is why we're here today, amongst other things. Thank you, uh, Councillor Guerin. You had a yep. Thank question. you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, there's so many things that I'm troubled with the whole the whole bit on this. Um, the, the the signs installed without a permit, with total disregard for the the process. The sign company that installs this sign knows better than to install without a permit. We have footings to consider. We don't know how deep in the ground they went with the footings, um, the height. I mean, there's so many things about this that are troubling me right now. And I don't even think we'd be here talking about this had it been a proposed prior to being built and installed. Um, I wasn't involved back in 2015 when the bylaws were put into place, but it's only five years ago, and we must have exhausted some time, money, efforts on that. We contacted, were, uh, had open houses, so I'm not in favor of, of, of looking over the bylaws again. I mean, it's just five years removed. Um, I know what these type of signs cost. I was in the business, and those LED boards are very expensive, and I feel for um, the Gorskis on that part, but... When you go and put the horse ahead of the cart, that's where I kind of draw the line on, on feeling sorry for the cost part of it. Um, had they simply just applied, had an administration go back to them and say it's a no, and then come and approach us, I still would probably th would be thinking along the same lines, but I think I'd be able to get there maybe. But I, I can't support it going back to administration and, and, and looking into something we just went through five years ago. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Anybody else? Council, Councillor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you to the Gorskis, you have an absolutely beautiful, stunning winery. I just want to put that out there. And I don't think I saw any straws when I was there either. So uh, it's beautiful. And I think that you'll be busy no matter what you do. This is one of the files that um, I did put a lot of thinking and time and energy in because it's not just as simple as... The, the conclusion I came to was not just as simple as giving an exemption because it is it is bigger than that and I do I am open to reviewing the bylaw because five years is a significant amount of time and things change and creating change is really hard so the first step of creating change is I have an idea and then the next step is like okay you know you have to kind of uh, you know, build the, the house one brick at a time. So we're opening the door to the conversation. Whether council wants to have that conversation about the bylaws, I, I'm willing to have it as well. I do have an issue with the process, and that's what I'm getting stuck on is, you know, uh, Mr. Gorski, you said, can I turn it on right now? Well, my gut is saying if we let you turn it on right now, well, we might as well just let everybody do anything that they want and we don't even need to review it. Like, if if we don't have a sticking point to do that review, we probably won't do the review. And then possibly other people, other owners, other uh, small businesses, large businesses, any business, uh, if somebody does nails in their house, they might want to do a sign. And then, you know, they might not go through the proper channels. And I really think your contractor, um, could be liable. I think he sh should have or she should have figured it out and came back to you and communicated that with you because it's really cre it's really put our council in a really difficult position that 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 is almost um, it's hurting the community too because we all want to move forward. We all want to support each other. You know, I raised it at the chamber on Thursday night um, because I knew that it was going to be contentious. But the you know the chamber members didn't even have a chance to read the report. Nobody like thoroughly before you know it was really discussed. So this is just the tip of the iceberg with this issue. I think it's a big issue. I do agree with Councillor Vanderdolen that maybe we have to divide the top of the the sign into the height. Do we and and then the digital media? Maybe that's two conversations. But I do think it's a big issue, and I do think that our community um, we owe them enough to allow them some input in this because if we have one, we could get four, we could get ten, and then that's impacting you know not only three, four neighbors but more neighbors. So I want those neighbors to have a say. Unfortunately, the agenda comes out Thursday at four o'clock, and you know people only have until well tonight. I mean, uh, Mr. Baker got on, but you it, it's not really out there yet. So now the. The topic is out there. More opinions are going to surface. And then council, you know, we have to, now the can of worms is opened. So we open it really big and we say, okay, community, what do you want to see? Is this, is this the right fit or is this not the right fit? And we have to stay with our process because if we don't stick with, if our bylaws mean nothing, then 
then why are we here creating them? Right? We, in, I do believe that 2015, I do believe in regular routine maintenance of bylaws because I do believe things change. And you made a lot of valid points. Like I was like, oh, you know, those are really good things. I want to see different things that you're, that you're doing. You know, those are all really good valid points that I didn't think of before tonight. So I think we're just digging into this issue now and I think it needs more review. Thank you, uh, Councillor uh, Councillor Bowman. Uh, just a quick comment, and I tend to agree with Mr. Guerin. Um, be very difficult. Oh, the sign is a beautiful uh, um, sign and, and does a lot of things. It, it still would be very difficult to make this fit uh, into the uh, regulations that are in place for that uh, area at this time. Um, the uh, previous council did the um, groundwork and did the studies, uh, and I think uh, uh, that's a laborious type study. It's not a quick, easy thing to do. So I, I uh, would not be in favor of uh, granting the uh, request. Thank you, Councillor. So moving forward, we do have a recommendation in front of us from administration. So I'm going to ask Council what they want to do with this recommendation. Uh, and the recommendation is that the application from Mr. Bernard Gorski for a site-specific bylaw amendment at 108 County Road 50 to retain the existing pole sign structure and an electronic media component be denied. So. Councillor Bowman. I'll move the recommendation. <laughs> Second by Councillor Guerin. Uh, questions? Uh, Deputy Mayor Malosh. Thank you. Through your worship, uh, I'm going to ask that to Ms. Chadwick. Um, so if, if we uh, deny the uh, application, what is the result? Does, uh, it, does Mr. Gorski and Mrs. Gorski have to remove the sign from the property? Like cut it down, take it out, or can they leave it? Um, like, what's the next step that they'd have to follow? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, the step is that our uh, bylaw enforcement officer, as well as our building division, would require that this sign be removed and that a sign be erected that is in compliance with our zoning bylaw. Uh, sorry, with our sign bylaw. Okay, further? Yep. Uh, yeah, there's a motion on the uh, floor. Further? Go ahead. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, if we were to have, uh, if we were willing to go through a uh, public consultation on our sign bylaw, if a majority of council, um, even if we denied the application, uh, would we be able to put a stall on the removal of the sign until we had a public application, a public uh, review? Thank you, and through you again, Mr. Mayor. Uh, that's a very fair assessment. So uh, our chief building official has the authority to implement a number of days until that sign needs to be removed. He can instill 60 days, 90 days, depending on perhaps maybe the season, the weather, uh, hardships, et cetera. Um, that is certainly something that council could impose, uh, a certain condition of you know uh, removal within you know, or rather uh, hold on removal until administration comes back with a report. Uh, another option for council's consideration is to defer the decision on this application tonight. Uh, so not only do you um, have the option, I believe through Mr. OJ as well, he can answer this question. You have the authority to make a decision to approve or sorry, to uh, adopt the, the recommendation as is or, uh, or didn't approve or deny it, but also to defer this application. Um, I can say also that looking into the signed bylaw in its entirety will take time. Uh, in the meantime, we have limited means to ensure that the sign is uh, turned off. So we're still looking at uh, an opportunity for us to um, 
enforce that. So it would be very difficult for us to enforce it. Uh, our hands are quite tied, so it would have to be a lot of site visits, a lot of eyes on the property from uh, the, the surrounding properties as well. So we have limitations to deferring, we have limitations to putting a hold. Um, it's not an easy solution. Uh, so, Ms. Chadwick, let's say um, let's say we did defer until, if if council were willing to look at the bylaw, and and have a review, uh, and we wanted to defer until that time, um, would it be possible to say let's uh, let's say have the uh, electronic portion of it um, dismantled, like unconnected? I'm sure there's a way of doing that. Um, to ensure that the that we don't have to go out there continuously to make sure, just so that everybody's relaxed about the whole situation, um, so that you know um, that's what I would probably suggest something along that line. But um, we'll see where it goes. And I think that's something that we can explore uh, should we get to that point and and working with the property owner if that is something something that can be um, implemented. Thank you. Just, uh, to add to that, is, isn't the electronic part of this sign the biggest issue on this sign? Isn't this the most important part of this sign, the electronic part? That's, you know, you know what I'm saying? We're going to go ahead. You know. Yes, uh, uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to say that if we, I think we should defer this, because if we just order them to remove it, we're also ordering him to remove a sign that was legal for 16 years. You know, and leaving him with nothing. So, you know, if you say, you know, okay, unplug it, don't use the electronic part, and we'll we'll settle the the, the height issue later. At least he's got a sign. And, and uh, I remind you again, the same sign that was legal for 16 years, even though it's higher than it was. But so then we can sort the rest out later. Thank you, uh, Councillor. We did have a motion on the floor. If uh, Councillor Bowman wants to uh, change his motion at all, withdraw the motion or. If that would be my intent. Uh, obviously, the, I think the feeling is to defer, and it's very difficult if it's on the floor, so I withdraw my motion and allow a defer motion to come forward. me. Is that all right with you, uh, Councillor Guerin? You were the seconder? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. No, but you were the seconder. Are you, are you in favor? So what's, what's going to be the pleasure tonight? We're going to defer defer this application through you mr chair if council does uh, pass a motion to defer or postpone it can either be to a specific time or until after a certain event so as long as that's specified in the uh, potential uh, motion mm -hmm. uh, councillor bowman did you uh, did you want to give it a time period uh, I, I think that mm -hmm. I think that motion should come from one of the people that we're looking for a deferral, so. Okay, uh, Deputy Mayor Malash. Yes, uh, through you, Your Worship, uh, I'll put a motion on the table and that we defer, um, defer the receiving or, or uh, receiving uh, this uh, decision or recommendation from administration on uh, the Gorski crew wine, uh, wine signery, a uh, sign until uh, signery until after um, public presenting public input until after no. we've had an opportunity to review the bylaw at the same time that a request go to the Gorskis to um, to come to an agreement somehow on the electronics electronics portions as far as disconnect so that we know that the sign's not operational until um, it, the, we've had an opportunity to review the sign bylaw again and that's second by Councillor Van Andolen. Uh, questions? Councillor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I know it, it may take a little while to get there, but I do believe there could be some, some lower cost in-house initiatives that we could do. I hate, I, well, I dislike it when a new council is held to the bylaws of the old council. We do have new council members here. So perhaps if, like, uh, Mr. Watson isn't here tonight. So perhaps if we have Mr. Watson come to council with 
all of the parties invited. He can explain his rationale as to why the bylaw is the way it is. And then the Gorskis and anybody else, the chamber, can explain the rationale as to why, you know, maybe we need to change it. So I think that I, it does look daunting. It does look, you know, maybe it's going to be really expensive. But if we get all the parties in the room and say, hey, like, this is where we were, but maybe this is where we want to be, we may all come along with maybe not everybody will be 100% happy, but a lot happier than we are tonight. Thank you, Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Malash. Yes, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I'm, I'm just going to change the, a little bit of the wording in the motion, if that's okay. Do we have already have a seconder? Yes. Okay. Yes. So the wording uh, is to uh, instruct Crew Winery on what needs what's required as far as the uh, electronics portion of the sign, uh, how we can uh, ensure that it's not being lit up. And the other uh, part is to... Um, restrict the area that we're looking to in the bylaw to County Road 50 rather than the whole town again. Uh, this is really what we're looking at, trying to change uh, within that area because we're talking about it pre previously being an agricultural zone, whereas this is a winery agricultural zone and there's and we're looking to have a lot of other businesses perhaps come along. Uh, could be um, microbreweries, it could be, uh, again, gift shops, um, could be a motel or a bed and breakfast that wants to advertise in a, in a larger size uh, sign that may be perhaps digital, but give the opportunity for that County Road 50 tourism area to give us some input as to what they may like to see our bylaw, sign bylaw change to. Okay, thank you. Uh, just to add to that, um, uh, Deputy Mayor Malash, it's a good point. We got to remember too, uh, it's it's in front of council today at rezoning all downtown Colchester. So are we going to run into this problem in the future? Absolutely. There's going to be signs that's going to be, uh, there's going to be applications to come in. If we're going to zone downtown Colchester, the commercial, we know we're going to run into this situation again. So this is something we, we got to address now. So that's my input. Anybody else? Okay, who is, uh, Councillor Van, were you okay with the change on the motion? Okay, all in favor of that motion? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Item 8, reports from administration, 8.1, building department report 2019-12, that the said report entitled December 2019 building report and development overview 2019 be received. Mover, please. Uh, Councillor Bowman and Councillor Verbeek, any questions? All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. 8.2, finance and business services 2020-01. Re 2020 water and sanitary sewer rates, and this is together with bylaw 1876 and its schedule A, uh, being a bylaw to establish the 2020 water and sanitary sewer rates and charges for three readings this evening. Mover, please. Uh, Councillor Bowman and Councillor Bjorkman. Any questions? All in favor? Carried. 8.3 is a uh, verbal report concerning the Ontario Provincial Police contract. Uh, Council at its budget meeting of January 13th asked administration to review the OPP contract in conjunction with the possibility of removing the OPP contract manager enhancement position. Uh, we have reviewed the contract and administration can confirm uh, that that possibility uh, is available. Um, one year's written notice would have to be provided. There's some particular written notice requirements, but one year's notice would have to be uh, required. Um, and there's no specific language in the contract uh, 
that speaks to it, but it would also appear that there isn't anything that would restrict the town uh, from subsequently revoking that notice. And lastly, the, um, the OPP contract itself, the overall contract itself, is up for uh, renewal or expiry uh, December 31st, 2021. So through you, Mr. Chair, just to confirm, uh, uh, direction to administration to provide one year's written notice on the elimination of the enhancement position? That's correct. So, so yeah. <laughs> so the public knows. Um, if, if you could just read that again, uh, so the public knows. Okay, go ahead. So, so the public's aware of what we're doing here. <laughs> that administration be uh, directed to provide one year's written notice to the Ontario Provincial Police advising of the town's intention to uh, remove or eliminate the enhancement position. Good. Thank you. Eight point four planning report 2020-02 re community improvement plan updates and this is together with amending bylaws 1877 1878 and 1879 that said report be received and that bylaw 1877 to amend 1143 uh, bylaw 1878 to amend 1314 and bylaw 1879 to amend 1612 be ready first a second time and be provisionally adopted this evening Move. Item nine, any reports from our youth council members this evening? Councillor Sissi? Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, Essex District High School is uh, having an A1 Chinese food fundraiser for the STEPS program. It will be on a Monday, January 27th from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. And the buffet will be from 4.30 to 8 o'clock. And when ordering, please make sure to mention that you are supporting the Essex District High School STEPS program as a portion of all meals is donated back. Where is it at? Uh, A1 Chinese food. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say that if any, in case anybody isn't aware, the Essex Youth Center is doing free tutoring now. Um, I have exams, so I've been going to get extra help for my math class. So if you know anybody, make sure that you go out there and you get the extra help you need for exams. Thank you, and to both of you, keep up the good work. We really appreciate it. Item 10, any update from County Council? Mm, Richard, have you got anything? No, no report this evening from County Council. No. Okay. We'll do all the correspondence. Eleven point one is correspondence to be received uh, through you, Mr. Chair. If it's the wish of Council, they can receive on consent, but with Council members and administration um, the ability to speak to any particular item. And it's for uh, Amy Cornier and Michelle Widowis. And we got to thank them for their completion of the uh, uh, academic, uh, academic achievement and their third course. So, and who's going to speak to it? Uh, Jeff, are you going to speak to it? Go ahead. 
Thank you, through the chair. Um, both Michelle Widowis, who is our tax coordinator, and Amy Fournier, who is our tax clerk, they have completed the Municipal Tax Administration Program. This is a three-course program offered through Seneca College in conjunction with OMTRA. OMTRA is the Ontario Municipal Tax and Revenue Association. So they completed this rigorous course. Um, it's great because it provides relevant and practical training. It's developed expressly for individuals working in municipal tax and revenue collection. So next steps, now that they've completed the three courses, if they desire, they can move on and achieve their CMRP designation, which is a certified municipal tax professional. So congratulations. Congratulations, congratulations to both of them. So any other on the correspondence? So uh, Councillor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, administration and councillors that attended AMO can correct me if I'm wrong, but the correspondence from the Ministry of Natural Resources didn't really seem to give us any hopes in terms of shoreline protection from their letter. They said to us, you know, we've requested funding for shoreline protection related to high levels, lake levels and erosion. The Disaster Recovery Assistance Program is administered my understanding of the disaster recovery assistance program is it's hard to get so um you know they it was nice that they wrote us back and everything but they really didn't provide any um financial support or help and maybe mr mayor you can um expand on that if i'm wrong so because our residents have been following this file and they know that we sent representatives to amo and we are trying but at the other end you know our our provincial colleagues have just kind of left us high and dry or low and wet I guess you could say I um, I agree with you hundred percent counselor when we did go to AMO we did meet with the ministry down there and uh, what we with the feedback we got basically was we're looking into it and they were forming a task force at that time and a task force I think we met in London I went down to London with uh, for a meeting with the task force and uh, the recommendations there uh, they were worth nothing to me. I was looking for funding, and that, that was the main thing. When we went there, I think every mayor there and deputy mayor, whoever was there from administration, it was the same thing. We were looking for funding. That's the only way you're going to correct shoreline erosion is through funding. And it didn't come, it, it wasn't even mentioned. And, and that was disappointing. But I agree with you, uh, Councillor, and we got to keep pushing. And, and I think at the county level, we were pushing for that, weren't we, uh, Deputy Mayor? We were pushing for that. And I think at the council level here, too, uh, we're pushing for that. But uh, uh, hearing none, we heard nothing from senior levels of government on this issue. And it's a very, very, very important issue. It's very costly. I was just talking to uh, a resident there over the last weekend. They spent $70,000 on their front. And they got a very, very, very small front yard. And I mean, uh, uh, there, there's going to have to be some kind of funding. I mean, it's nice that uh, uh, Jeff here put together with Libro for our area for shoreline protection. I, I think he worked hard to get that done through Libro. And hats off to you, Jeff, for getting that done. But uh, that's, that's one source of uh, money that we get to help our residents. But uh, I'll tell you, uh, for, for, the, for the money coming from the senior levels of government, I hate to say this, but I think we're going to be waiting a long, long time because there just isn't funding there. And, and that's where the problem is. Uh, we all know uh, the federal and the provincial government, they, the spending was out of control for years, and now we are so far in debt. Where's the money going to come from? And then... And, and, we know what's going on. Uh, uh, just to give you a little bit of example, the, the, the teachers issue here. Like Ford says, where are we going to come up with seven, $750 million of taxpayers' money? So it's the same thing when it comes to shoreline. So, but we are, you know, as uh, municipal level and county level, we have been pushing for, for that, and uh, we're not getting any results, to be honest with you. Councillor Bjorkman. Yes, and fortunately for one positive note from that same letter is the uh, the Fragmites uh, yeah, exactly. investigation that they're doing. Uh, we're, we're disappointed in, in Shoreline for sure, but part of Shoreline is this Fragmites invasion that we're having and the herbicide that they've been testing over water is working well and they believe it's going to be able to uh, be used uh, widely. So hopefully we're pushing further with that and soon that we'll be able to be part of that pilot area. Yeah.
brought up the issue on uh, septic problems, okay, and the, uh, the wastewater going into our Great Lakes. Well, when we sat in front of the ministry and, and uh, Jeff or Chris was there too, when I brought that up, and it was a totally new panel. They didn't even know we had a program back in the days through IRCA for uh, septic upgrades. So that's how far behind they are. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On the another issue, uh, re request for tiny homes bylaw in the town of Amherstburg. Just um, there has been some media uh, recently around tiny homes. Just wondering if that's something that in the future this council can have a conversation about. I know we did request a report a while ago about affordable housing and what that looks like. And tiny homes may be one of those options, just like secondary dwellings. So I would really like us to keep it on our radar if there's support to to uh, to give support to any tiny homes. Thank you. I agree 100% with that. Uh, uh, moving, moving towards the future, uh, and the the cost of housing today, and retirees even are not going to be able to keep, to stay in their homes. The, the rate it's going. So this is something we have to look at, and uh, and I'm glad Amherstburg's looking at. We should be uh, more aggressive at it too. I, I, I agree. Uh, we should look at some of our lands that's available that we take back. Uh, just an idea, and I think you brought it forward too, Councillor, on on uh, homes that we take back on tax. You know, we should look at maybe a little bit of affordable housing. Uh, what, what do we have to do with, uh, with the contractor to attract that contractor to build houses? Uh, do we have to donate the land? Or what, we have to look at different options to, uh, to help this shortage of housing. Because you know what? If you go downtown Windsor, it's just not people that's on drugs that are street people. There's people living in their cars and working. They can't afford to buy a home or rent rent an apartment. It's a shame, really, to think about it. So, a good point, Councillor. In favor, all the correspondents. Oh, I still need a motion. I need a motion. Oh, yeah, I need a motion to receive. Uh, receive all the correspondence. Yeah, all the correspondence, Councillor Bowman and Councillor Vanden All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. 11.2.1, resignation from the Essex Accessibility Committee, that the said resignation notice be received with regret, and that a letter of appreciation be sent to Mr. Brunel for his time spent on the committee. Mover, please. Uh, Councillor Verbeek and Councillor Garen. All in favor? Oh, question. Just, Mr. Mayor, just to speak to this, this is definitely certainly with regrets from my experience on the committee. Earl was one of the ones that was really pushing us for the Moby Mat in Colchester, and he, he came to the meetings like every year, let's go, let's get it. So um, it's kind of a special, it's, it's a special farewell, and I know they all are, but to me his is especially um, um, special. Um, and he won't be, we have a meeting now this week, and we do, we may have quorum issues in the future. So if you want to spread the word to anybody that there's uh, one or two spots on the committee, then uh, let's get the word out. It's, uh, it's a really good committee to be on, and Mr. Brownell did a lot of good work. Item 12, committee meeting minutes. That all of the committee meeting minutes listed in item 12, together with any recommendations noted, be received and adopted as presented. Need a mover? Seconder? Okay, I'll, uh, if I may speak on the uh, Essex Police Service Board, I sit on, on the board along with Kim. And it's, uh, it's a nice to let the public know that the province is moving forward with that program uh, on mental health. Instead of uh, the way it works, instead of uh, if they get a call to a mental health issue, they will get professional help instead of taking them and putting handcuffs on them, throwing them in jail overnight. They will take them if, if they will uh, agree to uh, any help that they need, which is a good program. That come out with the, uh, the conservative uh, government here uh, just recently, and it was, it's just being put in place now. So, and they're not... Councillor B. Arkland. Just uh, the Act Committee um, notes that uh, the, the Tea Party 
uh, it's going to be a tea party being hosted by the Act Committee on February 9th, Sunday. Uh, tickets have gone on sale. You can get them through the, the site, uh, our, our uh, town site. Um, it'll be a, a great event, something they want to get started to have it at, at the uh, train station. Um, so get online, get your tickets, because there's not that many seats. It's going to sell out, and it'll be great. I think, Deputy Mayor, uh, myself, we're going to be waiters. Yep, we have some. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Oh, yeah, point, point of information, I think you should warn people that this is a tea party involving orange Pico tea that you drink, not the band from Windsor. Because <laughs> I know, first I I water, they're coming. I so, I mean, there's... Okay. Item 13, financial. 13.1, that the October 2019 bank payments report be ratified as submitted. Mover, please. Mover, I need a mover. Uh, Councillor Bjorkman and Councillor Van and all, all in favor? It's carried. And 13.2, that the November 2019 bank payments report likewise be ratified as submitted. Uh, Deputy Mayor Malage and Councillor Bowman, any questions? All in favor? It's carried. Item 15. 15.1 is notices of motion. The following notices of motion will be, uh, are being presented tonight and will be considered at the February 3rd, 2020 regular council meeting. 15.1.1, Mayor Snively, that Canada's national anthem be played at the commencement of each regular council meeting for the town of Essex. And then, as added uh, to the published agenda this evening, uh, Councillor Verbeek has two notices of motion. If you could please state those notices of motion for Council this evening. Okay, yes, uh, um, thank you. And through you, Mr. Mayor, um, as um, driven by um, several residents that have come uh, to Council a um, number of years in a row, I. My notice would be to request that Council consider an attempt to get the old Malden Road uh, completed somehow in 2020's budget to direct administration to see if there's any funding options as they've done a lot of finessing in the past with, with the funding options um, through using uh, Councillor's contingency funds and um, um, looking at um, extending um, the loan on the Harrow Streetscape for, uh, to 18 or even 20 years if it's if it's a possibility to just uh, talk about this at uh, the next meeting. So the, the motion um, is just as I originally stated. Okay. Thank yeah. you, uh, And through you, Mr. Chair, uh, Councillor Verbeek, did you have a second notice of motion? I do. Okay. Thank you. That... Um, and thank you for the suggestion, Mr. Mayor, that council be um, provided with a five-year road plan so that we can ensure that the old Malden Road gets done in 2021 if we can't find a way to get it done in 2020. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Okay. Item 16, any reports and announcements from the council members this evening? Uh, Councillor Bondi, do you have anything? Uh, Councillor Van Endon. Councillor Bowman. Just one note. Um, over the holidays, a uh, former mayor from the town of Essex passed away, Marvin LeClair. Uh, some of uh, my age will remember him. He was mayor either late 60s or early 70s, and uh, uh, he was involved in many committees over the years with would have been the PUC at the time and that type of thing. So. Uh, just wanted everyone to be aware of his passing. I, I don't have anything. Uh, Deputy Mayor Malash, do you have anything? Yes, uh, through you, Your Worship. Uh, back on January the 10th, Councillor Bowman and myself attended an event uh, hosted by the BIA. And I just want to say thank you to the BI, Essex BIA and to uh, the Windsor Essex Small Business Developments Corporation and to Libro. Uh, Liberal Financial Services. Uh, the three of them together um, hosted um, Win This Space here in the town of Essex, Essex Center. And uh, Dan DeRosier, we were able to meet the, the gentleman that won that evening. And uh, apparently there were um, several um, 
businesses that wanted to win the space and they were uh, they had to go through a course it was a very involved process it wasn't just like let's look at what these people have to offer and then just simply pick one um, all of the persons that applied and all the finalists had to go through rigorous testing and uh, present business plans um, some of them are still going to move forward with uh, new businesses uh, even though they didn't win this win this space because um, the exercise uh, pushed them to actually put together a financial plan and were able to go to uh, <clears throat> the financial institutions to find out if they can get the money and found out that their ideas that were actually going to be good ideas. Uh, Mr. DeRosier, the gentleman that won, his first name's Dan. He preferred not to be called Mr. DeRosier, but Dan DeRosier. Um, he will be setting up shop next to the CIBC here in town of Essex. And uh, he's going to, the name of the company is, it's going to be an eco, um, eco products along with some other things but uh, it's going to be Emerson supply company and uh, I just again want to thank and thank the uh, the um, Libro Center the BIA, Essex BIA and the small business uh, Essex Windsor small business authority and also mr. DeRose congratulations on uh, being the winner thank you thank you and welcome him to the town of Essex Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Malash. Before we move forward, I, I did forget one thing. Uh, just to let council know in the public, uh, I am going to raise money again this year for that event out at Colchester, uh, the Essex Family uh, Fun Day, where we have the fireworks. I'm starting early. It's funny that we're sitting here. My uh, my phone just goes off, and it's uh, the Kinsman in Harold, and they want to give me some money. So they forgot last year to give me a, quite a chunk of money, but uh, I told them they're going to double up this year. So <laughs> anyways, thank you. Uh, Councillor Guerin. Councillor Verbeek. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm just going to say that to, uh, those motions I brought forward, where I had spoken to all the councillors here at the table, or most, uh, almost all, um, and I really appreciate. I just want to take this opportunity to thank my fellow councillors for their time and their help uh, listening to me, and some of them giving me some good guidance. And uh, to, at least two of them have suggested that we we try to have these conversations outside of chambers a little more frequently. It's it's really nice to to you know talk to talk amongst ourselves outside of chambers too a little more so thank you to all of you councillor b Arkman. all set <laughs> item 17 bylaws Bylaw 1871 to provide for the Shepley drain replacement bridges for do for and quick for third reading for council's consideration mover please Deputy Mayor Milaj and Councillor Bowman. All in favor? It's Gary. 1875 to confirm the proceedings from the December 16th, 2019 regular council meeting. Also for third reading. Mover, please. Need a mover. Uh, Councillor Bjorkman and Councillor Guerin. All in favor? It's Gary. Bylaw 1880 being a bylaw to provide for an interim tax levy and to provide for the payment of taxes and penalty and interest for third, sorry, for three readings this evening. Mover, please. Uh, Councillor Verbeek and Councillor Van Andolen. All in favor? It's carried. And bylaw 1882 to confirm the proceedings of this January 20 regular council meeting. Deputy Mayor Malage and Councillor Guerin, all in favor, and I need a motion to adjourn. Uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Malage and Councillor Guerin, all in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Council. Thank you, Administration, uh, for all your input tonight, and thank you to the residents coming out. Amen.